Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and uh, I hope you're all enjoying your railways and I hope you're all staying safe. So um, last week's video was about this zebra crossing. Nope it's not a zebra crossing it's a pedestrian crossing. God, I nearly got that one wrong too. Well I did actually. <laughs> uh, just a couple of times never mind. So I'm over the moon that that is done and it's correct and it looks right and it is right and it's going to stay right. So before we move on to what you're all been waiting for is the roof structure. There's a few short clips to watch first before we move on to where we are with the roof. had a little bit of a tidy up. Um, I've still got to hoover the tracks and the uh, platforms but uh, there don't seem to be too much debris or damage done um, which is good. Uh, I did accidentally knock the spire off the off the clock there but uh, that's quite easily glued back on but uh, don't it look different without the roof. In the last video I had a few comments about the weight of the roof and um, it's, it is quite light and it's quite flexible. Obviously that will change uh, once the cladding goes on but it'll be interesting to see how much this weighs when it's all um, finished. I might even make a competition out of it. So um, yeah, so while it's on the bench all I'm doing is I'm just going to go around and tidy up some of these solder joints just by adding a bit of solder especially where the centre section is soldered to the ends and the majority of the joints are not too bad the solder has flowed right around so which is good In one or two places it looks a bit dry but uh, while it's on the bench I can sort these out and then I can um, clean them up, clean up the whole roof, and then uh, we'll paint it. Right, so I'm just giving it one last degrease, and I'm just using ordinary um, enamel thinners. And is, as you can see, taking the grease off all that brown stain going onto that white tissue is the flux so using a brush to get in between each of the trusses to get the remainder of the flux off once that's done I shall then paint it and uh, this is the state of the tissue when I did the top half so the next phase will be to sort out the fascias because the fascias are leaning in believe it or not um, it's hard to see with the camera angle but they are leaning in so I'm going to have to trim this one down and all four of them down that side to push the framework in at the top which will help straighten it out and the other end is exactly the same. As you can see I've got the square up against the fascia and it's touching at the top but it's in a little bit at the bottom which means I've got to do the same here just trim this one these two and hopefully that will push in that way it doesn't need much you're looking at millimeters here and that should uh, sort that out Uh, 
I have removed the fascia so you can see right down in between the trusses. You can see a couple of them are not perfect. So, there's still a fair bit of work to do. So, we're reverting back to photographs again. Now, the reason why we're doing this is to get an idea of what the cladding will look like. Now, as you can see here, it looks open. It does not look like there's any sort of fascia on the top looks all the way open there's just a little bit there where it's gone back a bit off the fascia um, and then that's it uh, so you've got an open area glazing and then another cladded area so let's have a closer look at some of these photographs This is one of my favourite photographs of uh, South Hill Station with that G5 locomotive 044 tank pulling probably half a dozen suburban coaches, probably en route to Sunland. But if you look right in the top, you can't see any um, cladding or anything like that right on the apex. And if you follow it right around, I think there's probably a little bit of right at the back there. As you can see, you've got the opening. You've got some sort of cladding. Then you've got windows, and then you've got more cladding. So we're moving on a bit here. Um, this is uh, probably 1960s. Um, as you can see, it's totally open at the top and it's all blackened out there it's probably the snow covering it up so you can't quite make it out and they all seem to be the same this one's later on this is 1970s this is probably as you can see it's open and the glazing's gone there now I've opened it right up there. See more daylight probably. And here we have another photograph. Same features. But however, this photograph gives you an insight to the steel work. That definite shaped arch there with the spines coming off. And if we look really closely, that looks like tiles along there. And that just looks like ordinary, I don't know, probably um, some sort of cladding, similar to what's on the um, other canopy. So that's giving me something to think about. I could do the first part from tiles and the glazing and then cladding. I'm gonna to have to think about the the top there. And same again, same features open at the top. So I've got some decisions to make now on what to do regarding the cladding. Now the tiling is gonna take forever because I'm gonna to have to draw that. Unless I've got some Medcalf card, I'm going to have to have a look see what I've got. So here we have a few ideas of uh, what's going to happen. I'm going to use this right angle um, plastic strut, which will um, finish the top off. I'm going to leave this blank. And here we're going to have the middle cladding, and here we're going to have the bottom cladding. So I'm not sure whether to tile this, 
So we have similar tiles here, so it blends in. Like we saw in the photograph, or do something similar to what I've done on that canopy there with the ribbon um, 10 millimeter interval, something like that. So, uh, decisions have got to be made, but uh, that gives you an idea of what it may look like. Now if we go down underneath, will it make that much difference? Well, it don't seem to be blocking the light out. But uh, we shall see. Right, here's where we are at the moment. Um, as you can tell, it's raining outside. Uh, this. Um, roof was only painted about an, uh, an hour or so ago and it's quick drying paint it's that uh, humble spray paint it's it's a matte finish and it's a light gray uh, it's had two coats it had one coat at least a couple of days ago and it's just had its second coat so I'm just going to leave that to dry, hard dry. It's, it's touch dry at the moment, but uh, it needs to be left a bit longer. So that's where we are at the minute with the roof. Well, what can I say? The roof now has had a matte um, coat to seal the paintwork and uh, that finishes it off. Now the paint I used is a Humbrol acrylic varnish uh, spray can. And um, the next stage is to clad the roof. But before I do that, um, I'm going to have to think of a way of putting lighting into this roof um, with its own supply. Because when I built the two buildings on the other side, I did not allow for a spur cable to fit the lights too. And um, so that will probably be the next thing. There'll be a little small battery pack. Hopefully you won't be able to see it because I'm going to try and put it in this corner here. But uh, I think that will be for another video. So here we are. Steelwork is in place. So before we go, it was great to see everybody at the GETS. Uh, it was good, good, good laugh, uh, good catch up, and uh, yeah, quite a few familiar faces. And uh, no doubt uh, we'll meet up again. Now well, I didn't do any videos of the great electric train show because I forgot to take my camcorder, but never mind, it was great fun still. Anyway, there's plenty of videos out there of the great uh, electric train show anyway. So, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. Um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with the way the roof has turned out. And um, next time, we should look at the lighting and by the time I've done that I would have figured out how I'm going to clad it. So, thanks for watching now and uh, we'll see you again soon.
Bye for now. Bye.